What's up, Yup Gang? It's your boy Taxon, and welcome back to Yup the BSCG Things. Today, I got another exciting video for you guys. This is going to be my deck that I took to my last local Zoom at 3-1 with. This is my version of Goji to Rant. But before we get into the deck, guys, I do want to say if you want any custom mats and or sleeves, absolutely check out Pro Mats, guys. The best place to go get your custom card needs. Link will be in the description below for you guys to go check them out. And also, they are holding a monthly tournament um, at the second weekend of every single month. Uh, January kind of uh, flopped because we just didn't get enough members to participate. But uh, absolutely check the link in the description below to go to the Discord and get more information on this to where you can join for February's tournament. And with that being said, guys, if you like this deck profile or my content in general, absolutely consider hitting the subscribe button, like the video, and leave me a comment. Comment, hit the notification bell so you're notified every single time I upload a video and with that being said guys let me turn this camera around and show you what I played alrighty guys so here we are with the deck now let's go over what I ran so obviously first things first we got to talk about the leader active main on the front side you get to look at the top five cards of your deck and you get to add up to one red Goku BR or Vegeta BR or a blue Veku BR um, you get to add one of those to your hand from the top five and you shuffle your deck you awaken at four or less and you stand two energy on the back side, when you swing, you draw. You're going to activate main for two energy. You get to choose any one of your opponent's battle card, not, in, not ignoring barrier. Uh, no cost limit, so that's uh, very, very good. Uh, tap two and bottom deck any card. That's really good. And then activate main, choose one of your energies, place it in the drop area, and draw two cards. Uh, that's also a very, very good skill. We'll get go over why that's really good next. Here we are with our unison pack package. Um, Zeno Cosmic Unison. Uh, by now, everyone should really know what this guy does. Uh, he comes out for two, uh, you plus two, goes up to four, you get to place the top card of your deck into your energy, and uh, at the end of the turn, it goes away, and then once you use that skill, once it goes into the energy, you can't ramp for the turn. The minus five also being very, very good, choose all cards in all battle areas, ignoring barrier, and sh uh, shuffle them into the owner's deck. So that's a good way to get a board wipe on your opponent. Uh, that's our primary unison, but of course we still run boo unison because it's just too good. Um, for four energy, it comes out, double strike blocker, plus minus zero, draw a card. At the start of your opponent's main phase, you get to stand this card and your, one of your blue energies at active mode. Uh, and then minus one, when your opponent attacks with a battle card, uh, you get to choose one of your opponent's battle cards and place it at the bottom of his deck. Um, so since we run six unisons, we run four god ceiling. Um, I like f to keep four just because it's the only counterplay that I have in the deck and also it, uh, if I ramp it off the top of the deck with one of my effects, I'd rather just know that I still have some in my deck that I can come into. Uh, next up, getting to some of our negates. We got four Dimension Magic, uh, standard in blue. You tap one or rip a life for sparking, and then you stand two. Um, four Sensu Bean, also not too much to say about this. You tap one plus five to a battle card or, lead, or any one of your cards, and then stand two energy. Super combo of choice and probably the best super combo to run in this deck. Uh, Zeno, just because a lot of the times you will end up ramping into your boss monsters and you'll need a way to get them out. Um, this card actually clutched me in my very first game uh, the, uh, this past weekend. I was versing uh, the Broly BR, Harutagarn Chain, and uh, I basically had lost the game. I was at one life and I survived his last attack of the turn with a super combo and pulled my Fu Shrouding out of my energy and then cast it that next turn and that actually got me the game in that matchup. If it wasn't for this super combo, I would have absolutely lost. Um, next up, four topos, not too much to say about this as well. Uh, one red energy and one whatever energy because it goes down to two cost. Um, negate the attack, choose a card in your hand uh, and discard it and then you play him. And then if he hits play, um, you get to choose, uh, if your opponent wants to attack, they got to choose two cards in their hand and discard them every time. Uh, next up, another Floodgate that really is kind of useless. Uh, SS2 Trunks Heroic Prospect. I only say this card's useless because I run Topo in this deck. Uh, a lot of the times I just end up charging this card turn one just because it's not live until turn three anyways. Uh, card's great, don't get me wrong. It's just it's only really useful against uh, Gogeta Xeno in this meta. Or just Black. Um, so this is kind of just our standard make our deck work stuff. Now this is our main package. So getting off of the stuff that we can search with our leader, we got three Vegeta Godly Aura. Um, auto, when this card is played, you'll never use it. Auto, when this card is discarded from your hand from a Union Fusion skill, you get to look at the top card, uh, top seven cards of your deck and then search for a Gogeta BR card among them and add it to your hand and you shuffle your deck. And then if you add a card, you gotta choose a card in your hand to discard it. Um, two, uh, Vegeta prepping for battle. This guy's just gonna go get you a Vegeta, or a 
Gogeta or a Beku from your drop area. At any point of the game, you just discard him and grab one of those from the drop area. Uh, and then we run one copy of the new uh, Vegeta. This card actually would have been clutch in my Cuffless Surge matchup, but I never came into it. Um, basically, if your opponent's not killing off your Vekus, you play this card on a counterplay timing window and you get to KO one of your Vekus, uh, triggering, triggering its effects. So that's what he was really in the deck for. I never used it, but it would have been nice if I'd seen it in my Cuffless Surge match because he did not let me play my Veku ramp stuff at all, or not let me ramp with him at all. So there's my six Vegeta targets. Moving on to Goku. We got four of the Godly Auras. This is the only thing in the deck that's going to self-awaken you. And honestly, this card is very, very clutch for this deck because a lot of the times you will stay at high life if your opponent's not beating you up. Um, so yeah, that's four of him. And we got two of the one that when you pitch him with Union Fusion, at the end of your turn, you get to stay in one of your energies, the active mode. Um, this card's also very, very good, especially on turns where you use your energy from Zeno to play out Veku, and then you just restand the energy anyway, so Veku basically only costed like one. Uh, so yeah, that card's really good. <clears throat> Since I was talking about Veku, we got four Veku. Um, he comes out for three. Uh, he basically has the field against every color except for uh, blue. Red, and uh, Goku BR, and a Vegeta BR plays him. He's a barrier blocker. Auto when this card is KO'd. If your lead card's a blue Gogeta card, you get to choose one Goku and Vegeta from your drop area BR. Uh, add them to your hand, and if you do so, you get to add two cards from the top of your deck into your energy. So this is very clutch. Just make sure that if you have him on field and plan on using his effect, you don't play the Gogeta that shuffles your Gokus back into deck because that will make his effect useless. Um, and getting into the Gogetas, we got four of the blue-red one. Um, we run this at four because we absolutely need to see this card uh, by our turn four. Uh, this card comes out for five. You got to shuffle all your Gokus and Vegetas into your deck, and then he gets played. He's a barrier card, so like I said, against everything but blue, he's coming into play. Uh, at the end of your turn, he, uh, you get to choose two cards from the top of your deck and place them into your energy. And then you can negate the skill for the uh, game. That's not on variations of this card, it's just on the card itself, so it's not ramping two every single turn. So you can technically pay five for another one the turn after you use it and ramp two more. Um, not necessary, but yeah, that is something you can do. Uh, two of the big guy. Uh, this guy comes out for eight energy, goes over top of this guy. Uh, he is also barrier, so he comes out against everything but blue. When this card evolves into this, uh, into this card, you get to choose six cards from the top of your deck and place them into your energy. And then he has an activate main card. If you have 15 or more energy, you get to choose four cards from your opponent's life and bottom deck them in any order. Uh, card's very good. This card got me every game that I won. Uh, it's just the main strategy of the deck. Uh, and then we're getting into our one ofs. We have five one ofs just because I like one ofs. We got one Gogeta Fusion Onslaught. Uh, this card's very good because if I go into like my uh, five energy turn with Beck, uh, with Zeno at five markers, I can minus five, wipe the field, play, pay five, play this, and then evolve into this, deal two, and then swing a double strike. So that's a decent uh, alternative wing con. Um, another card that I run, uh, I almost never play this card, but when I do it and it hits field, it's uh, probably going to end the game. It's a triple strike, uh, triple strike, dual attack, and permanent. If your life's at two or less, he does cost only four energy. So. Uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, one Android 17 turning the tide. Everyone knows what this card does. It's, it basically ends the game like it's supposed to. He comes out for seven, shuffles you and your opponent's hand into the deck and your opponent's battle cards from their drop area. And then uh, he's at 30k crit. And if he's on field and he's on field and your opponent's at four, uh, three life, it's it's basically just wraps. So that's how that goes. Uh, next up, we got Foo Shrouded. Uh, like I said, this is this card got me my Broly BR game. If if I didn't play this, if I didn't super combo into this from my energy, because I did ramp it with a Veku effect early on, so he was like not something I was going to draw into. So using this to survive the last attack of my opponent's turn and then picking this up and then dropping it the next turn, literally got me that game, and I would have lost round one and not even done as good as I did with Gogeta <laughs> uh, if it wasn't for this card. So yeah, this card's busted. It it very well may need to be addressed. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, last card, uh, Hatch. Uh, if you're playing blue, you just play Hatch if you have it. Uh, no reason to play any other secret rare in blue, in my opinion. 
Uh, that's just the way it is. But yep, this is the deck I uh, played, guys. This is a list I'm running. Absolutely, of course, I am excited for uh, Vegeta Crimson. If the, that's the main reason why I jumped onto this deck for this past weekend and decided to play it and get some testing in with the ramp strategy. Um, I had a great time. My matchups were uh, round one. I went up against Broly BR. You guys kind of heard how that went. Uh, it's the Hurudagarn chain, so I was getting mad pressured really, really early, and hand destruction was uh, catching up to me. Uh, so I really survived, I think, like his turn four with uh, one life and like two cards in hand, and one of them being Foo Shrouded when I super comboed it out of my energy. So that is how that game went. Uh, next game, I believe my round two was against Kefla Surge. Kefla Surge was a really cool matchup, honestly. Um, he would not let me do my Veku effect at all. Like, he just did not swing at me at all game. So eventually, when I got to the energy, I played Gogeta. I used his effect. And then once I played Gogeta and started using his effect, I was able to eventually get a Veku off uh this game was so long and grindy that when I dropped Gogeta, I paid 8, I dropped Gogeta, I ramped the 6. When I ramped the 6, I plused 1 with Zeno, and then I tapped 7 and played Android 17. So I not only ramped myself to a point where I could just activate main and bottom deck a bunch of his life, but I also scooped his entire hand with 17. Because we were, I, did, I don't really swing with Gogeta when I'm on the front side either, and he was not attacking me because he didn't want me to use Veku. So we both stayed unawoken for a very long time. Um, yeah, so I played him, ramped the six, plus with Zeno, ramped another one, and then I paid seven, played 17. If you guys don't know, 17's only specified three blue, so you only need three standing uh, blues to play him. So that was uh, pretty clutch. Uh, he went from six to uh, zero life, and that's how I won the game. Next round, I went against Black Finn. Um, Finn is honestly a really good deck. Uh, Zeno Unison was almost 100% useless that game because I boarded him, turn two, got his effect off, didn't use nothing, didn't do nothing with the energy that I got with him. Past turn, it went away, and then right after that, he just paid two and played the Finn that just takes mine. And I didn't have a God Ceiling live at the time, so my Unison was uh, gone immediately. Uh, next turn, I used Veku. I ramped. Next turn, I used Veku. I ramped. Uh, I did not see my Godly Aura, so I'd never seen this until like turn five or six almost. And when I finally seen this, or no, it was turn four I seen this, and then turn five I dropped this. Uh, and by then, I had so I had so much energy. I believe I just I played him for eight. I still had four standing energy, and then I ramped six with him. And when I did so. I, I straight up just hard casted another one for 10 and then I just I activate man both of them and brought them from 7 to 0 uh, so that that was exciting that was probably the coolest play I've ever done with Gogeta ramp uh, last matchup was against Soul Striker you guys seen how that went uh, once he got such a big hand by like turn 3 there was nothing I really could do uh, God Seal really stops everything in this deck um, along with the fact that he also runs Baby Ape, so if I do sneak a Gogeta into play, he can just counterplay something else later along, and then hit him ignoring Barrier off the field. So, uh, yeah, Blue is just a hard matchup for Gogeta Ramp, but that's just the way it is. Uh, so yeah, I went 3-1. This is my deck, guys. Let me know what you guys think below in the comments. I want to know what you guys like in this deck. I want to know what your ratios are. Um, yeah, and with that being said, guys, if you like this deck or my content, absolutely consider hitting that like, hit that comment, hit that subscribe, and also hit that bell so you're notified every single time I upload a video, guys. And with that being said, we will see you guys next week. Deuces.